watching Nocturnal TV. My name is Fipu. And I'm Alex Sprig. And we've got a pretty good show. We do have a pretty good show for you today. What have we got, Fee? Tell them what they've won. Oh, well, in the box you received. Um, a little bit of white boy funk is going to be followed up by people at a club night all dressed up as big stinking hippies. Well, I'm here to say you've got something better than that. You've got a bit of performance art with glass. No, he won't be cutting off bits of his anatomy, but we can always hope and wait and hear and listen. You know, I actually... He does bleed. He does bleed. He does... Excellent. And uh, we've also got a little bit of blues. So, coming up for your enjoying pleasure is Justice Yeldon, performance art with glass. Ooh. Check it out. Nocturnal. Nocturnal! G'day, I'm Luke Isabella, I'm also known as Justice Yeldon. I played this garden hoe with, with, in a similar style and then I saw a piece of broken glass that we, we broke that day in the corner I thought, oh, that would be really interesting to, to, to play my, my music with glass because you'll be able to see my, my vocal techniques um, right, were usually hidden behind the metal I used to play. Um, so I, I mic'd it up that night and, um, and debuted it and that was in January 2003 and I was just amazed with the sound qualities I could get from, from a sheet of glass and, I've had a love affair with it ever since. The music's the foremost, most important thing. I'm, I'm an audio artist, but I'm, I do believe that the show is very important, especially if, you, if, you, if, you, if you're going to perform live, you should, you should give a show, and um, I think the, the glass does that. Like it, it has a mesmerizing fear, I like to think, with the audience. Like, um, they're kind of transfixed on the idea, is, it, is he going to hurt himself and that kind of thing. So that, and, you know, everyone thinks of glass and they think danger, like broken glass, danger, like you, know, you drop a glass, everyone goes, get out of the way, get out of the way, everyone picks it up and cleans up and goes, don't walk there, don't walk there, but I get it, shove it in my mouth. It, it's growing and expanding, I'm getting better at it. Like, all, all my musical career, I've made different instruments and done a couple of performances with them and then thrown them aside and neglected them and never really developed my ideas. And at the moment, I, I think it's important to, to continue with the glass. And, and because it's getting better, I'm getting more techniques and, and getting more control over it as, as a noise instrument. Like a, having, having control over a noise instrument step miraculous thing to begin with. Like most noise, noise artists don't have much control at all, so I'm really, really pleased with how, it, how it's going. Yeah, well, the, there's limited performance opportunities in Australia. I've, I've toured relentlessly for the last three years with this act and done 30 countries and over 300 shows. What are the kind of reactions that you get out of people to what you're doing? Oh, it's, it's, so, it's very mixed. You know, some people are just petrified, um, don't want to look, hide. And, you know, I've had people crying hysterically. You'd be surprised the amount of people, the amount of people have told me it's the most amazing musical performance they've ever seen in their life.
be able to bring fear as an emotion into a musical performance is something un un unheard of on, on most levels. And well, it's it's not that I'm meant to be a, a scary thing. It, 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 it's it's kind of lighthearted. I'm not a I'm not a scary guy. I'm not into I'm not into not into scaring people. But I, I like I like that idea that I can heighten people's mood. Not That was wrong! I personally liked it. Yeah, you would mental case, but yeah. you know what, like I, I'm feeling quite pleased at this moment that he's not my flatmate, because you know, a lot of cleaning up to do after that boy. Yeah, well, you know, you pay a price for art. Yes, you do. Hey, I got a story, you know, uh, a little while ago was the Music Oz Awards and this next band that you're going to see took uh, the best blues artist for 2006 Music Oz. But as he walked up on stage to accept the award, I love this. Yeah. You know what he did? He tripped over? He did a classic me moment. He tripped over, <laughs> fell on the stage, stood up and accepted the award on behalf of the extended family. What a goober. Hey, we're at Pete's Ridge with Extended Family, formerly known as Panda. Hey. Hey. Hi. Now, what's this award you just won? Come on, brag, brag. Apparently, we're a bit of a blues group. Um, or we did well with a blues song that we've got anyway. And uh, yeah, we won this fantastic prize, which allowed us to play here today, which was fantastic. <laughs> Music Oz, Music Oz um, Best Blues Artist of 2006. <laughs> Into the blues, most people associate the blues with like really old black dudes singing depressing songs. But we can dance to you guys. How, how did that come about? We've all got a, a big blues background, especially the three of us. I know this group actually started off as a duo, a raw blues duo between these two. And it was fantastic, you know. People used to come along to the club, pub, or whatever it was, and actually sit down in front of the stage and just chill out and hear the blues. And then as uh, family extended, we incorporated some other people's influences, such as funk and a bit of African, a bit of more exciting feels, and became more of a dance band, I suppose. Dance band? Dance move? Make Boog you move? Boogaloo. <laughs> We're a Boogaloo band. Fun band. Boogaloo. Fun band. Boogaloo. We all love roots, and so we've all got a bit of black inside us, especially our drummer.
attaching this to the body and put it through funk. I know that to be true. sense of fun in your songwriting oh, and when you play. Everything, absolutely everything. Yeah. Yeah. Without that, it's, there's no real point in us doing what we I think I think that's what works for us, especially at festivals, is the fact that we enjoy ourselves so much and it, it's a contagious vibe and it just spreads, you know? <laughs> Well, that was a little bit of footage from the Pete's Ridge Festival. And coming up, we've got... Show them the action, Faye. Do the action. Yes. Health Club. He's just telling me I'm fat, the bastard. Health Club is a new night oh. at the Flinders oh. of performance art, sort of... So I don't need to lose weight? No, you don't You don't need to lose weight. Huh. You just need to go to health club. Get drunk? Well, maybe. Thursday right. night at the Flinders in the city. Funk performance art, hippies. Yeah, oh no, I, I think they like change the theme every week. So it's like, a, it's got a different theme every week. But the night we went down was for the big stinky hippie night. Big stinky hippie night. Check it. On Nocturnal. You're on Nocturnal, it's the Swingin' 60s here down at Health Club, and we're with the two guys who help put on Health Club. Peace Tyson, peace Mikey. Now what is what is Health Club and how did it come about? There's basically nothing happening that was of any kind of I don't know, I, I remember when we were a bit younger, Thursday used to be the big night, and it wasn't really happening anymore, so we decided to just put on another night. I think basically like yeah, we just wanted something that um, a night that had a bit more creativity, you know. So so in terms of um, having uh, you know different themes, we put on a different theme every month, and uh, we try and get DJs who just know their music, you know, like without being too uh, egocentric or anything. So you know, like we'll have reggae nights and psychedelic nights and kind of crowd rock nights, hip hop nights and stuff, and you know we, we show cult films and have performances. So it just keeps things interesting, and you know, two nights are never the same. What do you do to keep healthy? I smoke lots of cigarettes. <laughs> People take things too seriously, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, we just, um, you know, we like to do things in a tongue-in-cheek way, um, and um, yeah, you know, like because we're not night promoters by any means, you know. Like, we're not players, that's for sure. No, definitely not. Yeah. So, so yeah, um, I think. Um, oh man, I can't remember what the question was. <laughs> Creativity lacking in the Sydney scene. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> a big yes. I don't know, but things are getting better, and I think there is a lot of stuff happening at the moment. Um, a couple of our friends, friends of ours, are doing some really great stuff, like uh, Dynamite Sounds, and um, which is down at the Brighton Bar. I think it's through the Spectrum, and also Womp Womp Womp. womp. Our friend Levens. Big night down at. Uh, Brighten up bar, yeah, so yeah. yeah. I don't know, like, we, we kind of, we do think there are good things happening, but we just wanted to bring a different thing to the mix, so. The more the merrier, pretty much, in terms of nights around town, I think. And just a question.
question on the 60s, the whole 60s psychedelic theme. Are the 60s coming back? Are the 60s like more relevant today than they've ever been with their rock war? Or is it just an excuse to wear lots of collars? Um, you know, a bit of column A, a bit of column B. I think there's a lot of excitement in the air around Australia at the moment and I guess like we just wanted to reflect that with this night on Australia Day. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it was an era where there was a lot of um, people were protesting war and, I don't know, we, we've kind of loosely themed the night around some sort of protest. Yeah. But basically, there is a bit of irony thrown in there. Just the amount of times you say, fuck Howard, you know? Like, you, you almost you almost kind of laugh after you say it the hundredth time and so I guess that's what we're doing we're kind of um, you know it's just a night out but we're getting people thinking about political issues in a um, during an election year on some kind of level which I think is important and of course we're all having fun getting drunk and listening to great music at the same time so Flinders and it's uh, www.myspace.com forward slash health club night health club night yeah. cool well let's give a big peace out to Mikey and Tyson peace, peace. Yeah. <laughs> and come and check out health club <laughs> Well, that was pretty trippy. <laughs> you know who's coming up next. It's a guy who used to be in a band called Funk Lantis, but he's decided to go solo. His name is Luke Eskim. Check him out on Nocturnal. Yeah, you know, because Aaron did. All right, this is Aaron from Nocturnal TV, and we're here interviewing uh, Luke Eskim from the Luke Eskim Corporation. He just played uh, at the Excelsior in Surrey Hills. And uh, how did you get go? How do you think it went? I think it went quite well actually, I've got to say, I was quite pleased with it. A lot of people say when uh, describing your music that uh, you're a, a big fat black man stuck inside yeah. a tall skinny white man's body. What do you think about that? Well, it's, you know, it's fair comment I suppose. I mean, I, I realise most of my vocal influences uh, have been big flat, big flat. Big fat. I'll say that again. Big fat black guys. I don't know, is that, can I say that? that yeah. I, don't, I don't like the sound of that. But I suppose that, that sort of music, you know, I listen to guys like Solomon Burke and B.B. Uh, King and, and Buddy Guy and those, uh, those kind of uh, gospel blues. Tell us about Cheese. Cheese is one of those songs, um, when, you, when you get into this thing of being a songwriter or a writer, you, you, you start to learn to keep notebooks, uh, just in case. Like, you, you get these lines in your head and, and Cheese, the first verse came to me in the middle of the night. I had to leap out of bed and, and write these words down. And, and I looked at them in the morning and thought, this is really strange, because it was um, uh, when you're tired and you're uninspired, late at night when the hunger bites, got to be cheese. You can melt it, you can grate it. Don't underestimate it. It's halfway between food and disease. I'm talking about cheese. And I really thought, that's just stupid. And then uh, I showed it to my French drummer at the time, and he said, oh, look, you're talking about your your dick cheese <laughs> and honestly I'd never it never had a sexual connotation at all <laughs> never it was a purely innocent song about cheese about you know late at night you eat cheese and you have dreams it was a, it was a very childlike song but then you know from him saying that of course the the other verses became to get in her underwear it's got to be camembert and all, all this business and uh, you know I, it's had a nice little groove and we could jam on it with the band for 20 minutes and uh, Always got a little chuckle, and uh, it, it's it's one of those songs that's just stayed. It always seems to be a favourite. So. <laughs> Moving on to uh, the music scene around Sydney. What? Are, just give me a few uh, of your thoughts about what's going on at the moment and, and where you think it's heading. Wow, that's tough. I mean. Uh, you know, when you actually go out and go to the smaller venues every night of the week, there's always something different. You know, there's a real diversity of things here in Sydney. And it might be that the spotlight falls on a particular sound at a particular time. I guess um, 
Uh, obviously, the Cat Empire was a band from Melbourne, but that was a big sound for a while, and suddenly, you know, it seems like all bands are trying to sound like that, but it's not true. You know, there are bands that were making that sound, and now they've realized it's a commercial sound, or maybe they're getting more exposure because of certain bands. Um, but I think there's really a... There's a great diversity of things out there, and I think there'll always be a great diversity of things out there. And it's just, uh, I just hope that maybe there's more of a public spotlight that maybe could be taken away a little bit from, say, shows like Idol, and fall a bit on, you know, the fact that there are uh, thousands of idols out there on stages every day in Sydney. I mean, you look at a gig guide, and there are 25, 30 gigs every day at least in Sydney, and and a lot of it is fantastic. Luke is quite a tall guy. I'm quite a tall guy as well. I'm I'm six one. So, so if uh, if you don't want to come and listen to his music, at least come and, and see him as a bit of a freak show. Cause uh, hey, that's good. I'll, I'll take that. <laughs> whatever, whatever gets him through the door. And uh, you've actually got a website as well. If people want to check out your website, what's your address? Well, it's www.lukeescom.com. You might have to spell that uh, your surname there. All right, I'll spell it out. It's L U K E. E S C O M B E dot com. Also, www.myspace.com forward slash Luke Eskimo. Well, that was the show for the week. It's all over, Fee. <coughs> we had fun. We got dirty. Yeah, man, I definitely got dirty. Check it. Look, I've got to go home and have a shower. I promise I'll return next week a hell of a lot cleaner. What have we got for them next week? Ah, uh, well, there's a couple of bands, but you know, there's something I've got to tell you about first. We're going to be having a bit of a fundraiser to make sure that this show, Nocturnal, stays on the air. It's uh, at Bar Broadway on the 22nd of February. There's going to be lots of bands, lots of DJs, a really good night. And of course, the money you help us raise keeps this show rolling. So make sure you're there, February 22nd. Bar Broadway, come check it out, hang out with the Nocturnal crew. Oh yeah. And also if there's anything you want to check out from Nocturnal, anything that has grabbed your interest, hit up the web www.nocturnaltv.org. Alright, it's time to say bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Next week, Elephant Mojo and Blue King Brown. Check ya. Here on Nocturnal. We are